In this video, we look at compound interest. Um, so on the left here, we can see a uh, table. This is a table that shows the growth of $2,000 at 7.5% using simple interest. So with simple interest, you get interest only on the principal, the amount that you invested. So here we invest $2,000. After the first year, we're always going to have $2,000 as the principal. And after the first year, we get $150 interest. So that's 7.5% of 2,000, uh, or 2,000 times 0 0.075. Uh, so the total amount that we have then is just the $2,000 plus the 150 for $2,150. Uh, dollars. The following year, again, the principal stays at 2000 Again, if we calculate the interest, we get $150, so we add that $150 uh, in. And you can see here the, the growth uh, over 10 years. It's $150 every year. At the end of 10 years, you have $3,500. Now, we're going to compare that to compound interest. The idea with compound interest is that you get interest on top of interest. So here's a similar table that shows uh, the growth with compound interest. So the first two rows here are identical. The first year you get, uh, you have your $2,000, you get $150 of interest. Now it's this amount that becomes the amount or the principal for the second year. So that $2,150 is what earns interest uh, the following year. So now we're calculating 7.5% of 2150 and we get $161.25. So there's a little bit more interest because there was a little bit more principal. And this procedure kind of repeats itself as you go. And you can see that after 10 years, uh, we have a fairly significant difference in the amount of money that you get from uh, investing in uh, compound interest rather than simple interest. So let's go through an example of how we can actually calculate uh, the amount of money you'd have uh, using compound interest uh, rather than simple interest. Before we do that, we can, we can have a quick look at a graph here. This graph shows the growth over time. Uh, the simple interest grows by the same amount every time we get uh, a graph that is a straight line. It's linear. Whereas with the compound interest, you can see there's a bit of a curve in here. And if we extend that even further, we would see the curve starting to grow a little bit more. So that's the power of compound interest, is that uh, as you invest for longer, you actually uh, get more and more money. So uh, here's a formula that we use for compound interest. A equals P times 1 plus I to the N. The values in this equation uh, are listed here. A is the total amount of money that you have at the end. P is the principal, the amount that you invested to begin with. Now, I gets a little bit tricky. It's the interest rate uh, as a decimal, but it's per compounding period. So when you have compound interest, you can compound once a year, so get interest on top of your interest uh, at the end of every year, or you can compound monthly, so at the end of every month you would get interest on top of your interest. You can even go uh, as far as daily. So uh, we actually have to figure out the interest rate as a uh, uh, per compounding period. And N here is the number of compounding periods. So if we're going to compound the interest four times a year for three years, four times three is 12, uh, so we need to make sure that N is 12. And we'll do an example so you can see what that looks like. So here we are, uh, a couple of uh, sort of, I don't want to call them dates, but um, sort of time periods to help you. Semi-annually is twice a year, quarterly is four times a year, bi-weekly is every two weeks, so 26 times a year. Semi-monthly is twice a month, annually once a year, and the last one there, weekly, 52 times a year. Okay, so uh, we're going to calculate the amount of investment if $500 is invested at 3% compounded quarterly for three years. So let's start off by listing the things that we know. Uh, we don't know the amount. That's what we're trying to find. The principal was $500. The interest rate needs to be the interest rate per compounding period. It's 3%, but it's compounded quarterly. So we need to be able to figure out what 3% uh, four times a year is what, what, how much, what percentage you would get for every one of those quarters. So we can have a uh, quick look there. We, we need to do, and I'll, I'll just do the calculation here so we don't lose track of what's going on. It's the 3% four times a year. So we would divide by four and that gives us 
Uh, again, don't forget that 3% is really 0 0.03 divided by 4, and that gives us um, 0 0.0075. So that's our I. N is the number of compounding periods. It's compounded quarterly, four times a year, for a grand total of three years. Four times a year for three years equals 12 compounding periods. So once we have this, we can plug it into the equation. A equals P bracket 1 plus I to the N. And then we plug in the values that we have. So P is 500. I is 0 0.0075. And N is 12. Now be careful here. Order of operations is important. We need to do the brackets first then the exponent, and then the multiplication. Um, many of your calculators can probably do this all in one go. I'll b break it down a little bit. So 1 plus 0 0.0075 is just 1.0075. And again, if your calculator can do that all in one go, uh, you're welcome to, to have... Uh, have it do that, but if you're not sure, 1.0075 to the 12 is just 1.094, and then 500 times 1.094 is 546 decimal nine zero. So therefore, the amount is 546 dollars and 90 cents. So that's how we can use the compound interest formula to calculate an amount um, for compound interest.